back to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Welcome in. Thanks for watching or listening, doing it however you're doing it, where you're doing it. I kind of mumbled the beginning, and I was... I'm sorry about that. Anyway, <laughs> guys, as always, these episodes are sponsored by our good friends over at Cardsphere.com, Ooh, yeah. the best place online to buy, sell, or trade magic cards. Whoop, whoop. Uh, they also have their draft.cardsphere.com. Go and practice in drafting, practicing. you scrub. You went 0 and 4. I know you did. You know who you are. <laughs> Go practice drafting. <laughs> Do it. Um, yes. Uh, really quick, I just want to say I hope all of your pre releases and your first round, whatever, with uh, Ravnica Allegiance went well. I hope you were blessed by mana. By by the, the deck of many mana, I hope it went well. Yeah, that one. Uh, we're technically going to be a week late on saying that. I'm realizing at this point because yeah. this releases next week. Happy belated pre-release. Yeah, that. Uh, also, Fine. our giveaway ends t- t- today. Yes, today. today. As you're listening, can we still enter today, Kevin? Yeah, sure. Why not? All right. If any <laughs> any entry past today. Past today. By the time this count. goes up, it will definitely be cool to still enter. Yes. By like midday or like early afternoon, I will probably pick the winner. But I'll announce it. You'll see it. Be on Instagram, all that stuff. Uh, if you don't yeah. know about it, go to Instagram, follow us, repost the giveaway post, tagging us, and that's it. It's like the basic rules, y'all. Yeah, and you do get a free Ravnica Allegiance bundle. That's the giveaway. Awesome stuff. We've already yeah. had a butt ton of entries, so way to be there, people. A, we appreciate a you. A cubic butt ton, if I'm not mistaken. A cubic butt ton. Is that metric? What is that? That's a ton. It can't be metric. No. Kevin, why would you ask that? All right, anyway, <laughs> moving on to our random card of the day. I have no clue what's going on. Three, two, one, mana barbs. Okay. I know this okay. card. Okay. Uh, so it's an enchantment for three and a red. Each time any land is tapped for mana, it deals one damage to that land's controller. This is an interesting card. I love this card. I love it. Um, It's not very good no <laughs> it's not broken by no. any means but it is a piece of some fun fun uh angry prison decks and shells that you can play in commander yep um i i just really like this card yeah uh it's pretty much cheap it's cheap everywhere to get it what yeah what am i trying to say Every, it's not an expensive card. Thank you. That's what you're trying wow, to say. Words are weird. Today. Words are weird. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, so it's not expensive, um, and it's not a super powerful effect. However, uh, in red, it just makes perfect sense. Yeah. Think about when this card was printed. Everything in red was cheap. Yep. Super cheap. Uh, so you throw it in a deck with a bunch of little dudes. You ca- spend one mana a turn. Owie. Oh no. <laughs> but then your opponent over there with his green monsters. It's very like. Ouch. Uh, a new-ish version of this, I could, I would consider a somewhat new version of this mm-hmm. would be like Eidolon of the Great Revel, where it like punishes yeah, you for way. playing like certain cards. Mm-hmm. I think th- I love cards like this, where it's just like, hey, you know that thing that you have to do to play yeah. the game? I'm gonna make it really painful for you to do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, all right, cool. Yeah. Like, I love it. It is, like you said, good yeah. in prison commander decks for sure. Uh, I don't know if it's good in draft. I don't... Um, I guess it kind of depends on the deck. Yeah, I would like, say probably no, only because the curve matters so much yeah, to and like, everybody. Four mana do nothing right away doesn't seem great. Absolutely. Turn four is kind of like, because at turn four, that's <laughs> kind of the peak curve in most draft decks. Yeah. You start to peter off, like have less cards in five and six, seven, etc. Yeah. So at turn four, I want someone that comes in and affects the state, yeah. uh, or I want good removal. There's usually good black removal at four, we're getting like sorceries now that do stuff like deal two damage or you gain two life, yeah. um, whatever it is. Uh, so turn four seems pivotal in draft to me. So I don't know that this is good limited. I feel that. You know? You I know don't I mean? really think it is. Um, right. I mean, like you said, in like a red deck win style thing, it makes sense to have a card like this. But I think yeah. on turn four, you're looking to play multiple creatures, not a mana barbs. Right. You know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. You just want to outvalue on the board. Yeah. So. Yeah, I agree. Cool card, though. Yeah. Glad we actually saw something interesting. Uh, Okay, so what are we talking about today? So, um, first of all, we're going to talk about the Krark Clan Ironworks. Krark. You can say KCI. KCI just got banned in modern. Rip. Weird. Uh, Actually, no. Don't rest in peace. No. Please just just die loudly. uh, Yeah. I hope you're having a great time down there with Taxi and Probe. Golgari, the dude. Grave Troll? The rest of it. You know. 
all of those guys. I hope you're having just a swell time down yeah. there. Uh, yeah. I hate yeah. you. We're going to segue this talk later on into annoying decks in general and why they suck. Spoilers! But, um, really quick, we're going to just kind of highlight the KCI ban. Right. Uh, obviously, the announcement was made last week, I believe, um, as of the release of this video. Yeah. And uh, that was the only banning uh, to be announced. They did mm -hmm. say they were also watching, specifically in the KCI deck, they were also watching Mox Opal, mm -hmm. as well as Ancient Stirrings, mm -hmm. um, which are both powerful enablers, uh, mm -hmm. I will say. But I am very, very glad that they did not choose to ban those. Um, they're still looking at them from what their article said. I'm kind of surprised, mm -hmm. to be honest. I think they're fine, uh, but that's just me. Well, yeah, and, and some of the argument stems not from KCI itself necessarily, right. but other decks that those cards fit into, specifically yep. Ancient Stirrings, not so much from Mox Opal, but, I mean, Ancient Stirrings gets to go in, uh, uh, heck, Lantern, Tron, really anything yep. that runs with a bunch of artifacts. Uh, and the argument against it right now is that <laughs> it seems unfair to dig for five mana in green for five cards uh, five cards excuse me five <laughs> cards for one mana in green thank you yeah um th some people believe that that's just a little bit too good which i i uh, uh, i can see why some people who have recently lost games against <laughs> good decks would feel that way yeah um and that's not to be snide but i honestly do understand that thinking that well it's not that the deck is unfair it just works too good yeah sure okay um, and, and pointing out the boogeyman in Ancient Stirrings, I think that I, I understand why some people are doing that, but that's sure. not, I don't think it's the problem. I don't think it's ban worthy no. uh, at this point. I do agree, like, I kind of understand, but mm -hmm. not, I mean, I'm glad that they chose to ban KCI, not any of the right. enablers for the actual deck. I think that's a much better mm -hmm. option. Um, Box Opal does hit things like Hardened Scales, and then, like you said, Lantern, right. a bunch of other, uh, just artifact-based decks, and it yep. is a good card, but yep. it's, I mean, it's just fast mana. Which is good. Yeah. I say just fast mana as if that's not a big deal. It is in the game, but um, that, I mean, it hits so many decks, things like that. Like, you, you really affect a lot of things by banning a card like that, as well as Ancient Stirrings. Sure. And so I think they made the right choice there. Yeah. Um, I think the, and one of the biggest things that we maybe haven't talked about in the past about bannings is that when you ban a card that hits multiple decks like that, you want to look at, okay, we're banning this card because this particular deck is too strong is 90% of the time why they'd ban a card. Yeah. Um, KCI, um, Aetherworks Marvel, like mm -hmm. a few seasons ago. Stuff like that. This one deck is an issue, but all of these these four decks run this card to be more efficient. Yeah. And if you take four decks out of being effective in the meta, now you're talking about another two decks potentially being crazy yeah good, you, know? you open up the door for a lot of other decks mm -hmm. to start taking over and that's not what you want to do by any means right. so it, especially in modern right now yeah. with the later turns uh, four or five being so pivotal games are won and lost there having these decks that are by all accounts not super aggressive um would on paper be much slower without these good cards i think it just takes way too much out of the meta to talk about taking away things like Mox Opal, yeah. like Ancient Starrings. Their efficiency needs to be there. I just think that there can be better hate potentially printed for them. And I think we're seeing that a little bit now. Definitely. I mean, uh, Unmoored Ego or whatever it was was mm -hmm. printed in guilds, which is like, hey, Tron, just kidding. Um, you know what I mean? Like, it just kind of takes it out of the game. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, so there are now options. I think they're working on the hate package right now. I do think... Um, sideboarding is obviously really important. I think that's kind of the thing people undervalue in deck building, I will say, yeah. because we've talked about this before, like with the Aetherworks Marvel ban, yep. that like there was plenty of artifact hate. Nobody was running it. Right. Um, so right. just run the artifact hate. Right. I mean, you know, it's whatever, but... <laughs> Uh, the past is in the past. Get your crap together. Uh, anyway, uh, the other thing that I just want to mention on the bannings that they did touch on in the article was they did look at Popper with Foil and Gush and that uh, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. interaction. That was the word I was looking for. Um, and they decided they're going to keep an eye on it, but they're not doing anything about it yet. Right. I think that's fair. Um, I don't know that we've even really had enough time with Foil in the metagame for it to really impact anything quite yet. Um, mm -hmm. I do. We will have Popper at a major event very soon. Yes. Uh, and so we're going to go. see, yeah, props to Popper. Uh, but we are going to see how that really affects it, I think. Right, there. right, so, right, right. Uh, um, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I don't keep my pole, my finger on the pulse of Popper. 
that no, much. No, I don't really either. Um, but it's a fun format, by the way. If absolutely. you are on a budget, absolutely. So it, I mean, it's definitely something that I'm going to watch. Um, uh, yeah, when it's on the main stage and, and et cetera. It's weird because um, the professor actually talks about it this way, and I do kind yeah. of agree with him. Uh, it's sort of like Legacy Light because, in a weird way, you get to play a lot of the cards that you can play in Legacy right. that you can't play in Modern, like Ponder yeah. and things Brainstorm. like that. Yeah, Brainstorm, yeah, yeah. like fun stuff. A lot of really fun stuff in Popper that you cannot play in most like popular formats. So, right. like, I really like it. It's also budget friendly, so anybody that's like new to the game that wants to play on like a higher mm -hmm. power level mm -hmm. but isn't looking to invest hundreds of dollars or even thousands, like, buy yourself a Popper deck for twenty, thirty bucks, and you're yeah. good to go. Like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Popper You're competitively good to go. Like, it's Absolutely. pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that's it for the bannings and everything. We just wanted to bring that up. But with the KCI band, uh, we started kind of talking about annoying decks. Oh, yeah. Uh, and three in particular yeah. came up, the KCI deck being one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, we also mm -hmm. brought up Eggs, which has been banned before. Uh, right. And then uh, Lantern Control. So... Will, you want to kick us off, buddy? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, we'll talk about, uh, I don't want to speak ill of the dead, but KCI. Uh, <laughs> we'll start there because it's on everyone's minds, I guess, right now. So, KCI is just another one of those uh, infinite combos that works with artifacts. Yep. With Pyrite Spell Bomb. Boom, goes the dynamite, and you win. <laughs> um, it's not a complicated combo by any means to pull off. Uh, it has to do with sacking artifacts of uh, declining uh, CMC. Yep. Getting those artifacts back, uh, including Pirate's Bell Bomb, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, it's, I'm not going to go into detail because it, we're, you're not going to be able to play it anymore. Yeah. Uh, it's nifty, but look it up if you'd like. Um, the interesting thing about KCI and what made it so competitively viable is you didn't necessarily need one specific set of cards in KCI to make it work. Uh, you did, however, need, um, help me, Kevin. Scrap Trawler? Thank you. I, <laughs> I keep wanting to say Scrap Heap Scrounger, and I know that's not right. You did need Scrap Trawler and some combination of cards, but they could be really a bunch of different ones. Yeah. Um, they could be Chromatic Star and a few different ones. Um, they could be the... Mirror Retriever was a big one. Yeah, Mirror Retriever. The... Um, Sacrifice me, draw a card. Yeah, artifact. yeah, yeah. Um, any kind of little mana rocks that are artifacts in modern right now. So it could be a bunch of different stuff. Uh, and what made it so frustrating to play against is that it would chew through its deck so quickly. Yeah. Um, because of the nature of you're sacking artifacts to draw cards now and then, um, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so it won quickly. Yep. Uh, which is frustrating to see uh, and frustrating to play against. Um, my biggest question is why don't you ban Scrap Heap Trawler? Scrap Trawler? Scrap Trawler. Scrap Heap? <laughs> Scrounge Trawler. The scroungiest. The scroungiest of all the, the trawlers. The hash ringing. Uh, so uh, why don't you ban that card? Um, in and of itself, it takes a lot outside of KCI to get this card going. You didn't see yeah. it in any other decks, really. That's true. Um, now, that's true for Ironworks as well. Uh, I think. Yes, that's true for Ironworks as well. <laughs> However, um, that being its, I mean, it's the namesake. It's the yeah. flagship card. Yeah, it's yeah. the big bad. I also think what made this deck so, so overpowering mm -hmm. was that you could technically combo off at instant speed. Mm -hmm. You could do it in response to whatever your opponent was doing, and yep. you can win in response to whatever your opponent's doing. So you weren't pressured to, like, I have to do it this turn. I have to right. do it now. You could literally wait until your opponent just tapped out, and then you're like, all right, good to go. <laughs> like, yeah. Freebie, you know what I mean? Absolutely. And the, the issue that we ran into, and with all three of these decks that we're going to talk about, is that game one was just like a dead giveaway. Like, the combo deck will win, because there's almost no chance of the other decks actually coming out and beating them. There's right. no main deck hate, and so like post-sideboard, yeah, there's probably ways to do it, but KCI was notoriously resilient, because it could combo off with multiple cards. It didn't right. necessarily need a specific thing uh, as much as some other combo decks. So uh, that's what kind of made it so resilient. And so like for it to be gone is a huge plus to modern. I think it's going to uh, liven up the format a bit. We'll oh, say. definitely. But um, yeah, and then eggs, kind of more of the same a little bit. Definitely. I mean, it won with the same Pyrite Spellbomb, just recurring it. Uh, it was 
a weird combination of cards that gained yep. you mana, recurred all your artifacts from the graveyard, and then you got to do it all over again. Yeah. And um, if you saw, I think who was it that played it? Uh, the dude that smiles constantly. He looks like such a nice guy. Um, oh gosh. I he won with it in name. a tournament, and then it got banned. <laughs> and like, yeah. I watched he, the finals. I, did he not make the deck? I think he did. Uh, I wish I could remember his name. Um, regardless, it's, it's been so long since he's played. Yeah, it's been a long I time. I don't remember. But if you watch, I mean, it's on YouTube. You can go watch it. Just look up Eggs Finals or something. Yeah, he's playing against uh, Yuya, right? Yeah, he's it is Yuya Watanabe. Watanabe. And like, you just see Yuya, just like, yeah, I know what's going on. <laughs> Not <laughs> only that, Yuya at one point puts down his cards, and the other guy um, <laughs> is like counting up dice, like putting cards in graveyards yeah. and stuff, like keeping track of things. Yuya helps him. Yeah, he just helps him. He which, like props he's, to Yuya. Yeah, <laughs> like, he's like <laughs> counting the dice for him. He's like, okay, you do this, right, and then that goes. Yeah. Okay, and then we do. Like he's helping him keep track of it <laughs> because there's nothing he could do. He can't do anything. He, I think he was playing Jund or yeah, something like that. He was. I he mean, absolutely he's was. He's like a Jund master. So. And um, if eggs doesn't fizzle, which it's hard for eggs to fizzle because yeah. it's so efficient. Then it just wins. Yep. So Watanabe's like, all right, well, we're we're doing this. I yep. suppose. But the problem was that there is always that possibility that you fizzle. So you do have to wait through the entire thing. And the combo yep. takes so freaking long it, to actually get I to the think winning it's position. It's like a fifty nine minute yeah. match and he won two oh. Stupid. If like that it tells is you anything. so long. And that like takes away from the fun of the game. It doesn't it gives a huge barrier of entry for like new players especially mm -hmm. because they don't understand what the heck's going on. Right. Like Not only that, but <laughs> if someone who, and granted this doesn't happen, but let's say hypothetically someone who's new to Magic sits down at a competitive event and goes up against the best deck, one of the best decks in the format, a la KCI, a la Eggs, whatever yeah. it is, and they just outright don't play. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah. You still play against an Abzan midrange, a Jun midrange, yeah. against a... Uh, zoo deck you're playing magic you'll have blowout games but nine sure. times out of ten it's going to be a back and forth kind of match with something like kci or eggs it's literally a one-sided match mm -hmm. um and so it just makes it not fun it gives yeah. that barrier of entry for new players especially and honestly yeah. for seasoned players too who just don't want to actively play those decks yeah um because they're they are not fun they are not fun decks they're high all. win rate decks that's why you play them absolutely um, they absolutely well they were and in unified, like team unified strat or uh, com competitions and things like that, it made sense to have a deck like that on your, on your, your roster, team because yeah. nobody else needed the cards that were in that deck. And that's so, that's like, a good point. That's fair to say. Um, <laughs> uh, it has a very specific list. Card pool. Yeah, I mean that you don't mess with it, but no one else would run like Pyrite Spellbomb really. Yeah. Right. You don't need to. So. Right. Um, yeah, it's just kind of interesting, but. Mm. The last deck that we're going to bring up here on this annoying decks that suck uh, is a deck I actually like. <laughs> Surprise. Surprise. Uh, Lantern Control. So this one is yeah, a little bit different. a little more time on this one. Yeah, because it is technically still legal, uh, though very heavily not played uh, anymore from my understanding. But I might be wrong. Uh, really? I think. Uh, yeah, check. Let's just look. Fact check me because I might be wrong. I um, seen. So... The thing about this deck is, yes, it's kind of a combo deck, but it's more of a prison style deck. Um, so it's not like looking to get, I mean, it is looking to get specific cards out, but it's not like it's an instant win, uh, like KCI or Eggs. It's a much more grindy matchup. So you're really getting into the exact same thing. Uh, uh, well, I mean, no, it's, I mean, we're still at like 1%. Right. Uh, not much. Um, but uh, yeah, it's one percent of the meta right now, guys. Just so everybody knows, it's got a lot of hate going for it right now. I think so. It won this one. Hey, go for that. Is it online? Where is the main event? Oh, wow. Anyway, <laughs> go lantern. Um, <laughs> is this a lantern list? Yeah. Well, they've changed a little bit. Um, it's a war of invention deck now. Uh, but yeah. So what? the idea behind this. Yeah, it searches it out, man. Um, the idea, if you don't know what Lantern Control is, sorry we're rambling, uh, but the idea behind this is that you control your draws and you control the opponent's draw by milling uh, the top of the deck. And you get to see the top of the deck at all times thanks to Lantern of Insight. So essentially you're working with like perfect information. Yep. Uh, newer versions of this deck don't seem to run things like Duress and Thoughtseize and stuff. Uh, that was kind of the original uh, 
the original build was focused on, let me get the hand information that I need and then let me play the Lantern of Insight. That way I'm working with perfect information at all given times and I know exactly what you need and what you don't need. Uh, and that does work, but I think there's a more efficient way to do it now with War of Invention and things like that. Uh, and so people are playing a little bit of a different list, but uh, the essential aspect of that deck is the exact same as it's ever been, which is just control the draws yeah. uh, and protect yourself. And so this was a, a very much a, uh, a rogue build that just came out of nowhere and kind of took over for a short time. Again, it's much less percentage as far as the meta goes now, but uh, it is a very annoying deck to play against because it's a long, long, long uh, win condition where you're just milling out the opponent turn by turn. Uh, and it's literally like two or three cards per turn max. So like, yeah. it takes a long time. Now, usually if you assemble the lock and your opponent knows, okay, I'm just out, they'll concede. But a lot of times the problem with this deck was you would go to time on your matches. And so it just was like not fun to play against. Yeah. Again, uh, similar to KCI and eggs. And so there was talk that this deck should have been banned at one point. I definitely don't think that's an issue now. Wait, uh, I yeah, don't. Then. I don't. Um, as we're as we're looking here. Yeah. One two. Yeah. It won two events. That was an MTGO competitive league. One of those. Oh, uh, I don't count uh, hold, that as heavily as like a main event, which it did win a main event. I mean, all right, but this is a level two event. Yeah. This is a level three event, and <laughs> it got second place. I mean, that's good. It's ranking high. Now, it's ranking high, but it's 1% of right, the meta. But what we're, <laughs> like, it is important to know what we're not seeing is, is exactly your point. It is 1% of the meta. It's not being played everywhere, so it's not annoying right. the crap out of everybody. <laughs> right. So, I mean, look, this is an MTGO. It's the finals in 2018. Where is it? <laughs> Second. Oh, we just looked at that. It's Lantern List, not Lantern. Uh, anyway. But that's, I mean, it's the same. It's the Lantern it's deck. It's the same yeah, yeah. deck. A little bit different. Now it is, man. What? I've been out of the game. Yeah. Normally I research this stuff before we talk about it. Yeah, Lantern's yeah. changed, y'all. Lantern has severely changed. I've kept up with the deck a little bit, uh, but it's ever changing, it seems like. Now with it's got like Sorcerer's Spyglass main deck and stuff like that, which makes sense. But which main orb main? Dampening Sphere main. Uh, man, it's got a lot of outs. Well, let's, let's talk <laughs> about other stuff. Sweet. Mox Opal main. <laughs> hey, Ancient Star. Main! Uh, <laughs> two of the other cards. Uh, but yeah, it's a it's a it's a really good deck, a really not fun deck to play against, or really play for that matter. No. <laughs> and here's the thing. Tell me what the thing is. If you invent a deck like this, that is so cool. Mm -hmm. Props to you. Um, to be there. Hide it. Go away. <laughs> Don't show anybody. Don't show anybody. Keep it. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. I love the, the one idea to behind this all. deck, though. I will say. That's, yeah, that's adorable. Um, no, it's just like, okay, so as a control player, this is just a ramble. You guys can tune out at this point. All right, so this is just a ramble. No, tune in. Listen, you need to hear the madman speak. Yeah, Go that's ahead. fine. Go ahead, Kevin. This is just a ramble, but if your friends start talking like this, <laughs> get new friends. Uh, no, get I will. an intervention. <laughs> um, as a like control player, someone who likes being in control of the game at every, mm -hmm. every given point, that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Lantern mm -hmm. is like, as an idea, Yeah. just as an idea, not in practice, but as an idea, is like, it's the pinnacle of decks. Because it's like, I know all of the information that will ever be known in this entire game, and I only have to use a few cards to lock you out. Yeah. And then you just have to either wait it out or concede, but you're gonna lose either way. Yeah. And like, that idea as a control player, is like, oh, it's like the holy grail of a control deck. However, if that process takes you 60 minutes to complete a game, yep. <laughs> yep. it's not fun, okay? It's not fun for anyone. Not fun for anybody. It's not even fun to play. Like, No, it's really not. No. Everything so, is so, once you assemble the lock, everything yeah. is, uh, I don't know. It's essentially turning the page with the same questions. Yeah. You check every box, turn the page, check every box, you're done. Yeah. Uh, it's awful. Yep. It is. There's no, I mean, there's no, no other way to say it. It's nope. terrible. So, Lantern sucks. Sucks. Oh. Sucks. Uh, all of this conversation to say that uh, Magic, as a card game, 
and we as the players of said card game suck. I'm just kidding. Suck. What? No. Um, what? we have the ability to create really terrible things. That's true. Uh, we monsters. should avoid that at all costs. Uh, yeah. But I mean, keep doing it. Just don't tell anybody. Yeah. Hide or just tell us, and then we'll tell everybody. And by everybody, I mean all 565 of you. Way to be there. Wink. Uh, hey. Let's get that number up. Selfless plug. <laughs> All right. So I need to get apologies yeah. to your listeners. I need to get back on this whole... Uh, he did have a baby, Will. It's okay. I have not been... How's looking... the baby? Oh, God. Didn't not, I didn't ask. So I'm so good. sorry. Hey, I should have right. asked. I could talk for hours about the baby. They, they're not here for that. No, I know. I just Some people are. <sighs> Maybe. She is just an angel. Just a treat. That's so good. I'm uh, so happy for she's you. She's awesome. Um, and, I mean, I, I get up... Okay. You can actually tune out now. Uh, I get up so early for, <laughs> for work these days that um, my wife is usually taking the, the like, night shift, essentially, oh, yeah, with yeah. the babe. Um, except when I'm off, then it's my turn. If I'm off the next day, I should say. Um, then it's my turn, which is fine. But for the, the last two nights, sleep has been like awful oh for this kid oh that's not good it's, it's like starting <laughs> we we will like okay we soothe the babe babe's yep. crying we go in pacify her rock baby baby's like getting sleepy all right i'll put her down it takes me and it's maybe a good i don't know eight feet from her crib to the door okay so i'll turn walk as soon as i'm out of the door it starts again it's like mm. And it's not a gradual thing. She is lungs full. Yeah. Blasting. Whew. Man, I didn't realize how tired I was until <laughs> just now. Till this very moment. That explains a lot. Maybe it does. Kev, yeah, maybe it does. I don't know. Um, anyway, back to magic. All that to say is uh, there's some things that I need. So off topic. We and have, we're back. I need to look back into modern because there are some decks here that I mm. do not recognize. Is it Phoenix? Is really sweet. This Arclight Phoenix is, is a really cool a card. Deck that we're gonna Wet's we're gonna update. Whistle. Yeah, we're gonna no, uh, we're gonna update Will on modern a little bit. I actually this need to get a bit of an my update. Biscuit. But this eggs my roll, rolls my egg. That's better. <laughs> this rolls my egg. This flips my pancake, dude. This leg goes my ego. This pours my waffle. Dude. This whips my cream. <laughs> I can't use that one. <laughs> you sure can. Whipped cream is the thing. How no, else I do you know. make whipped cream except for whip it? Uh, yeah. Whip it real good. Man. Red deck wins back at 8%. If anybody though. actually gets to this point in the video, please comment down below with saying uh, this whips my cream. If you do, you win something. We'll send you something. Butter's my lobster. And I'm not kidding. I will 100% send you something. <laughs> like Something good. Some whipped cream, maybe. No. Uh, some magic-related thing. Short. Veggie. Okay, let's look at this one. Bloom is tiny. Is it the same one, but they're different players? Yeah, they're just... It's just a bit Why different. Why is it on here a Let, Do this off-camera. Okay. Off-camera. Off-mic. We're not on camera. All right, guys. So, all this to say, annoying decks are a thing. One of them is not a thing anymore, though. And we're happy about that. Uh, so, the yeah. dead. Well, move the king. Yep. Uh, so moving on to the final segment. Oh, uh, we have brand new crack of packs. Of course, sponsored by our good friends, uh, Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. Thank we are guys. so excited to be opening up Ravnica Allegiance. Finally, we get to open up oh, Ravnica sweet Allegiance. Sweet so this baby. set is awesome. Uh, I've opened two boxes of it sweet and baby. a pre-release kit and various other packs, and it is fun. Uh, so true. Here's the deal. Normally, we set goal cards. Yep. Uh, individually, we set goal cards. Neither of us uh, planned ahead enough to do that. That. Uh, literally, that is what was said right before recording this. Do you have a goal card? Nah, do you? <laughs> no. Nope. So, we agreed. Whoever gets the Shockland first wins. It does not matter which. There are yep. obviously five. Right. Uh, so, whoever gets it first wins. Yeah. Uh, and you guys, we do... I mean, last time we did a pie in the face. Right. Uh, I feel like we should mix it up, but we don't really know what to do. So we'll figure something out, or you can suggest things in the comment section. Maybe we can do like a charitable event of some sort. See, that would be a good idea. Someone, the loser has to like do a 5K. Oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> dressed as a chicken, perhaps. That is something. so much pressure for just pulling a card. <laughs> I don't want to do that. 
<laughs> All right, so we'll the figure loser... something out. <laughs> um, let's okay. Let's set some rules, listeners, mm. subscribers, whomever. We need suggestions. Yeah, that's we want it idea. to be charitable, and a little bit embarrassing. A little bit. Mm. In it some, have to be embarrassing. <laughs> No, but in some way it has to be charitable. So that's a good idea. Whether it's has to, I don't know. Let's let's resurrect the ice bucket challenge. Maybe I don't know something mm. like that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the um, we'll figure something out. We'll start something. Eat a spoonful of sugar for diabetes challenge. I don't know. That doesn't really work. <laughs> well, we'll figure it out. Can you actually do that? Is that good for your health? Probably not. <laughs> sugar apparently is like super bad according to the internet nowadays. Anyway, um, all right. Let us open them up. No. Nope. Okay, well. <laughs> Already? Just like that? I got a blood grip. <laughs> so you guys better hurry up. Yeah, give us something. Um, <laughs> I can run a 5K because I'm in shape. So. Uh, wow. So I'll do that. Shots fired, but or, you're not wrong. Um, Let's think. What else can we do? I don't know. Give us something. We want to be able to donate. I love kids. We could do like a... Um, feed hungry kids, yeah, sort of thing. A do a food drive, but in some way be embarrassing about yeah. it. I don't know. Now I'm all excited. I know we could do magic we could is do something magical, awesome, guys. Um, all right, well, let's talk about limited for a second. Well, I'm not gonna take blood crypts, but Obviously. my uncommons. I have Cry of the Carnarium, which is a fine like sweeper card in like a control deck. Yeah. I don't like doing control decks in limited if possible, so I probably wouldn't take that. I do have a Gruel Beastmaster, which is a pretty sweet, aggressive card. I'm uh, probably the one I would take. I do have Incubation and Incongruity as well, yeah. uh, which is actually a pretty good card. If you don't know, this card is pretty sweet, so I would potentially pick that. But I think I'd go Beastmaster. It keeps me a little bit open as well, uh, which I do like. Um, This pack kind of stinks a little bit. What's your rare? Um, So, sorry, my rare was Warrant and Warden. Actually, no. No, but like Warden's kind of sweet. For five mana, though, I put a four-four out. I just isn't like it a, an instant speed though? No, it's sorcery. Oh, it's sorcery. Yeah, My yeah. Bad. Remember, you good. have to pick. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I know. You can't fuse. I actually right. had somebody ask that earlier, so let's address that very quickly. Sure. So, cool. Okay. So, the, what's cool about these dual cards is they are two cards printed on one, which is nice. Um, however, there the fuse mechanic is not in this set. Right. Fuse is what allowed you to play two cards at the same time that were like a dual card. Mm -hmm. There have been three, well, really four if you count like the aftermath cards from Amonkhet, but I'm not going to for this mm, yeah. argument. Somebody did ask about that, like if you could play them from the graveyard. No, yeah. this is not aftermath. Yeah. So picture them as two separate cards yep. physically printed on the same body. Without the fuse mechanic, you cannot play them at the same time. Yep. Um, in the past, in the first Ravnica, the hybrid mana got printed on it. So there were dual cards, like, well, Fire Knights wasn't hybrid mana, but that's, regardless, there were different cards that you could play. Yeah. Um, and then in return, we got the fuse. Yep. This isn't fused, two separate cards, da da da. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, you can only pick one side. Yeah. So I could either play Warrant or Warden. Yes. I cannot play both. Same rules apply. Once I play Warrant, it goes to the graveyard. Now, that being said, it's still a card in the graveyard, Warrant, or excuse me, Warden. Yeah. If you have a card that says target sorcery in the graveyard, target whatever, it's still a, a legal target. Yes. Because Warden is its own sorcery spell with CMC this. You just have to colors. specify one side of it at any given point. Right. So it's pretty simple. They're just two separate cards. Yeah. The same, it's just the, the same fuse body. mechanic was never like. I actually, for a while, didn't realize that Fuse was the actual mechanic. I right. just thought if it was a split card, you could choose to play both. But yeah. uh, we obviously remedied that very quickly. So Right. Um, anyway, so it's a fine card. I'm not super excited about it. I do, however, have a really good removal. I have Grotesque Demise. Ooh. Exile target creature with power three or less uh, for three at instant speed. I like it. Yeah. Um, and honestly, there's not a bunch else in the pack that I get. I have Carrion Imp. <laughs> eh. Nah. Um, that's really my only relevant creature. Spear Spewer is okay, but just okay. It's honestly like not very good. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's not a ton in here I take. I have the Senate Guild Mage. I do have a Gruel Beastmaster, um, but I think I value the removal over the Beastmaster. So. That is fair. Yep. Um, Will, what do you think of this set, by the way? I really like this set. Um, yeah. 
I like the set for constructed. I like it for limited. I like all things Agreed. allegiance. Uh, yeah, that's really sweet. It feels just it, it feels good. Uh, Soul tie mid range. Let's go. I want to see it happen. We, can, I mean, it's the pieces are there. Uh, yeah, I've already seen some deck lists go around, and it looks really sweet. Yeah. It just gets everything. Like right. Soul tie seems like, in my opinion, the color combination I would most go for. Yeah. Uh, just because it gets removal, it gets ramp if you need it. Like it gets. Yeah. Stuff like bombs, like the Hydroid Crisis, which is just stupid value. <laughs> right. Um, like, yeah. just gets everything. It's what, uh, so when you talk about what decks need what, a mid range deck needs exactly what Saltai gets now. Yep. Which is ways to slow down the early game, get to the late game quicker, and then put out a big fatty. It also gets the Mystic or whatever, the green, blue, the Simic uh, four drop, the flagship four drop that they always, they did a cycle of in every one of these. Um, the two, like two of each mana like, four drop? Yeah, it's the three, two, I think it's a three, three two. Three, two flash counter spell? Flash counter spell, yeah. Uh, mystic snake, essentially it's a mystic right. snake. Right, uh, right. A little bit harder to cast, but um, it also gets that, and because mana is like so good right now, because we have we have, shock lands. We have yeah. shock lands. We also have the check lands or whatever they are. The ones that come into play. Dominaria. Uh, yeah, yeah, buddy lands. Uh, buddy lands. Thank you. Not check lands. Uh, so we've got like crazy good fixing right now. <laughs> and so, right. like, if you're interested, three color is very available. <laughs> so, oh God, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I, it just seems like it gets the best mm -hmm. stuff right now. Um, Definitely. I was kind of originally on Esper. I thought Esper would be pretty sweet. But I was like, waiting on Azorius to come through, and I don't think that it did. I don't think that it did either. Um, Azorius was a bit underwhelming. Yeah. Uh, just kind you. of all around, it was a bit underwhelming. That I think my, it's clearly yeah. the worst in limited. Uh, but, I mean, to its to come to its defense a little bit, it's those colors control aren't color, yeah. right. Those well, but like blue-white flyers is always a thing, and that still is a thing. But it's, it's but like it is a thing, but it's not always very good, and it's yeah. not as good against players who know what they're doing. That's it, fair. That, that might be mean to say, <laughs> but fair. like, at limited Harsh. players, <laughs> limited players will draft a flyer that's a bomb because all yeah. right, flyers are a thing. I need a big fatty in the sky. Yeah. Yes. Limited players will draft enough removal to say your big flyer is dead. That's fair, and you know, you know I mean? to save the removal for the good stuff, right? Of um, course, if you know what you're doing. Of so course. yeah, no, I definitely agree. But um, yeah, Azorius has just been kind of a letdown all around. Um, yeah. In Magic Wars, it's been out long enough. In Magic Wars, uh, Tyler picked Azorius. I picked Orzov, and demolished Tyler. I'm not shocked. And felt real good about it. Orzov um, is. Orzhov is sweet. It looks real <laughs> good. Uh, so. To be fair, I had a couple of really lucky plays, I will say. Uh, not to devalue myself, but I did get very lucky on some things. And so well, hey, that kind of... Go. go watch the video. It's a fun video. But... Um, there you go. Yeah, it's, it was fun. Good. I haven't gotten to like open a pre-release -re pre kit in a long time. I and so just nice. It's just so fun. Yeah. Like build a little deck out of it. And I got like crazy good pulls for my colors, which was kind of stupid. Seraph of the Scales, if you find that card, you pick that card. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Um, There's a lot of mythics that you get in limited that you just kind of pick because they're big yep. fatties. Yep, that's how that goes. So and Then you're welcome, you're in those colors. Yeah, way to be there. Uh, you just eating a salad? I uh, know you can continue, it's fine. <laughs> I just felt like we were towards the end. So. Yeah, we are towards the end. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to ramble about before you take your first bite? Oh, yo. <laughs> All right. Yo, bro. Let's go to a, here's what we're going to do. Are we about to ramble? Nah, we going to organize a Magic Nerds back giving back day thing. Let's go to a soup kitchen. Okay. Let's make some freaking food, bro. I'm super down. Let's be like, hey, we're a podcast. We had a challenge. I'll organize it. I'll set it up because I lost. Okay. Here's my stuff. And then you can still pie me in the face. Oh, How's I that like sound? that. How's that that sounds great. I have wanted to pie you in the face pretty badly since you did it to me. I feel good. <laughs> I feel good to pie someone. Yeah. Um, I was going to say we also need to set our end of the year goals. Should we do that in this episode or should we just do that off camera? Oh, off. Off Absolutely. camera? Okay. Y'all don't get to know what's cooking behind you the curtain, You don't get to baby. know until the end of the year when we tell you. Don't look in my kitchen. Um, anyway... Yeah, I think that's it. I think we're going to go. I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was really rambly and ill-prepared, but it was fun. The next episode is going to be much better. Yeah. Lots of homework to be done. Yep. Lots of salads to be eaten. 
Not for the Will, shape, not for we? me, because I don't eat salad. Got a moon shape. Yeah. I eat very unhealthy foods. All right, anyway, we're going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. We uh, really appreciate our sponsors and all you guys. Make sure to enter the giveaway, all that jazz, but we're going to get out of here. My yeah. name is Kevin. My name's Will. This has been It Resolves. You sure you don't want a bite of salad? Yeah. <laughs>